Hello and person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the mysterious types of galaxies known as UDGs, Ultra Diffuse Galaxies. And specifically, we're going to be discussing one of the recent studies, the study you can find in the description below, that was recently able to explain one of the mysteries in regards to their origin. Specifically, how some of them seem to form and how they seem to change over time. But first, what exactly are these UDGs? So today we know that there are a lot of different types of galaxies, with many of them forming in very different ways. And although we can generally classify most of them into these three types, elliptical, spiral and irregular, in reality each of these types has a lot of different subtypes in them, and some of these subtypes seem to be extremely rare or don't actually fit into any category. And so even today there are still a lot of different debates in regards to various origins of certain types of galaxies. Now one such subtype is the dwarf galaxies, with I guess the most famous examples of dwarf galaxies being the partners of the Milky Way. The two galaxies you see right there in the top left corner, we have the large Magellanic Cloud and the small Magellanic Cloud. And of course, as the name suggests, dwarf galaxies do not have a lot of stars on the inside. So a typical dwarf galaxy will usually contain anywhere from a few hundred million to maybe a few billion stars, whereas the galaxy like the Milky Way will contain anywhere from a few hundred billion up to several trillion stars. And so size-wise they are definitely different. But today we believe that most larger galaxies are usually formed through the collisions of smaller galaxies, such as dwarf galaxies with the two partners of the Milky Way eventually colliding into Milky Way as well. But because dwarf galaxies are generally smaller and have less stars, they are also much more difficult to detect. And it just so happens that there is a specific type of a dwarf galaxy that's even more difficult to detect than any other type. Today we refer to them as Ultra Diffuse Galaxies (UDGs), And the first such galaxy was only discovered back in 1984 in the beautiful region right here known as the Virgo Cluster by two astronomers, Alan Sandage and Bruno Bingali. And back then they were quite surprised to discover that there was actually a galaxy that was barely visible. And it wasn't until 2015 or about 6 years ago that we officially gave them a name, Ultra Diffuse Galaxies. But interestingly enough, despite the lack of luminosity or despite the lack of light they produce, they do contain a lot of mass. Some of them are just as massive as the Milky Way galaxy. But the majority of this mass is just not visible, it's either gas or mysterious dark matter. At the same time, unlike a typical galaxy, they generally do not produce a lot of stars. And so in many cases they are essentially these reservoirs of extremely ancient stars. Stars that have been there for billions and billions of years, with really no new stars being formed at all. But what's really strange about these galaxies is actually their total mass. Some of them seem to be the galaxies mostly made out of dark matter. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos. But for example, this galaxy right here known as Dragonfly 44 is an extremely strange UDG located in the Coma Cluster that seems to only emit approximately 1% of light compared to the Milky Way galaxy, but contains at least 10 to possibly 100 times more mass suggesting that it's mostly made out of the mysterious dark matter, or something really really massive on the inside that seems to keep the galaxy together. As a matter of fact, its mass is actually much closer to a typical galaxy, not to a dwarf galaxy, but the mass itself is more or less completely invisible. Which is why this is probably one of the strangest galaxies discovered in the last few years. But on the completely opposite side of the spectrum, another pair of UDGs we recently discussed are the satellite galaxies of NGC 1052. In this case they are known as NGC 1052 DF2 and DF4. These galaxies seem to be practically the opposite. They seem to contain almost no dark matter whatsoever. And even though they have a relatively similar luminosity, they contain hundreds if not thousands of times less mass. And so really the only commonality they seem to have is that they just don't really produce any luminosity, they are very diffuse, they don't have a lot of stars producing light, but they seem to contain a lot of other structures or some other strange activity on the inside that's just not visible in most of these spectra. For example, in the past some UDGs discovered in the Coma Cluster have been discovered to be about the same size as the Milky Way, but once again only producing about 1% or even less than 1% of light. And so this extremely low surface brightness makes them very unique, very unusual and extremely mysterious. 
but also very, very difficult to detect, which is why we only discovered them in 1984. And so one of the major questions the scientists were trying to answer here is, well, first of all, what exactly happens to these galaxies as they sort of evolve? Also, what exactly makes them so extended and so large in size? And do the halos, specifically the dark matter halos of the galaxies, contain any special features on the inside? But to do all of this, the scientists had to rely on computer simulations, mostly because, once again, these galaxies are just very, very difficult to detect and to study. They used the most complex galactic simulation known as the Illustris project. The project we've discussed before that's able to produce extremely accurate simulations of evolving galaxies and allows us to see what actually happens inside of them as well. And specifically, they wanted to understand why certain UDGs stop to produce stars or in scientific terms, why they become quenched over time. Basically, why do some of them contain only these ancient stars and can no longer produce any new stars whatsoever? And one major question they were really trying to answer is really in regards to how these galaxies evolve. Normally, for a galaxy to become quenched, to essentially stop producing stars, it has to experience some sort of an interaction with partners. Partners in this case can steal some of the matter and actually a lot of gas from the galaxy, preventing it from forming new stars. So in this case, a lot of these quenched galaxies are normally found somewhere in the middle of a typical galactic cluster. A lot of other galaxies near them just probably stole all of their matter and so they're unable to create any new stars. But it just so happens that many UDGs are located where there are no partners, they seem to be isolated, yet they also cannot produce new stars. And so trying to understand what happens to these isolated, ultra-diffuse galaxies is one of the questions they really were trying to answer. To do this, they simulated their formation using the Illustris project, and then they sort of rewinded the time, looking back at the evolution of the galaxy, but sort of going back in time, seeing what influenced its evolution. And specifically looking at how the galaxy changed in terms of its luminosity, eventually reaching a point when it actually did become a very dim, ultra-diffuse galaxy, and was no longer producing new stars. And to their surprise, it turns out that the formation of these UDGs still has to do something with the partners that they used to interact with. But moreover, it actually has something to do with the orbit of these galaxies around the galactic cluster. They seem to have extremely long orbits, kind of similar to a typical comet. So, for example, a comet in the solar system will spend the vast majority of its time far, far away from the sun. But once in a while, it will come close to the sun and that's when it starts emitting a lot of gas, but also producing a lot of light as well. In this case, the simulation also showed that the majority of UDGs are very similar. They seem to spend the majority of their time completely alone in the middle of the intergalactic space, somewhere far away from any partner. But sometimes they do come relatively close to a galactic system with a lot of massive galaxies in them. And during that time, the dwarf galaxy will be transformed dramatically because a lot of the gas from within the galaxy will most likely get stolen by more massive partners. And so in this case, even if it was a star-producing galaxy before, as it passes through the region with a lot of mass in there, it eventually turns into what's known as the quenched galaxy. Something that looked like this in the simulation and essentially represents the ultra-diffuse galaxy we know of today. And so in this case, the scientists refer to this as a backsplash galaxy, a galaxy that got kicked out of the system and spends a lot of its time alone by itself, but a lot of its mass was stolen and so it's unable to produce really anything. It's more or less stuck being a quenched galaxy until its next interaction when it returns back into the galactic system. In that case, it might be able to capture some mass and possibly even some gas and maybe even produce new stars, but for billions and billions of years, it's still going to be traveling on the outskirts and stay completely by itself. And so at least some of these UDGs seem to be formed this way. They seem to be sort of like comets in the solar system. They're sort of like these leftover pieces that got kicked out by the massive objects in the center and are now traveling on extremely elliptical orbits. But while being kicked out, their gas was also stripped from them and so they're no longer able to produce new stars. And this also means that a lot of them will probably remain similar to what they are today for an extremely long time. A lot of the stars that seem to be present there now are essentially red dwarfs, stars that can survive for trillions of years, and they're not going to change in any way for those trillions of years. 
And so unless something dramatic happens to these galaxies, they're going to remain like this for an extremely long time. But in this case, it's also important to mention that not all EGGs are probably created equally. Some of these galaxies might actually form in a different way. Some could have been formed as a result of a failed large galaxy, and so there could definitely be several formation paths. But because they're so difficult to see and to study, we need better telescopes in order to, once and for all, solve the mystery of their formation and find more of these unusual galaxies out there. But because new telescopes are going to be coming out in the next decade or so, we might be able to see and find more of them in the next 10, 20 or 30 years. Anyway, until we find out what exactly is happening to these galaxies, or until we find another mysterious one somewhere out there, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.